Now, the big story at the end of the group stages, certainly from an English perspective, was what was quite possibly the weirdest World mm. Cup game that us as England mm. fans have ever witnessed. Of course, England and Belgium both already qualified as they went into that, that decisive game on Thursday night to decide who would top the group. Um, but given what had gone on in all of the other groups, it looked like, uh, <laughs> to a more cynical person, it could have looked mm. like both teams were not particularly interested in winning because there was a better route possibly to the final for the team who came in second place. With that in mind, England made eight changes, Belgium made yeah. nine to their starting 11, and for long periods of the game, it looked like it was gonna be a pretty dull nil-nil draw, but for one uh, moment of magic from Belgium. So, let's talk about this from an England perspective, because that's the perspective that mm. we really uh, mm. care about, obviously. Um, there's been a lot of debate among England fans over the past, uh, what, you know, I don't know, 48 hours or so now, or 24 mm. hours as we're recording this, um, about whether that's the right thing to do. So in the end, obviously, we lost the game, 1-0. Uh, Belgium win the group, we come second. We've got a harder second round opponent now, arguably, in Colombia than Japan if we've yeah. won the group. But if we get past Colombia, you've got to say, our route to the final, and this is getting ahead of ourselves, clearly, <laughs> yeah. our route to the final, <laughs> potentially, certainly our quarterfinal and semifinal, on paper at least, is easier than it would be in the other half of the draw. Mm. We avoid Brazil, we avoid France, Argentina, mm. um, Uruguay, Portugal, Portugal, all of those guys on the other side of the draw. So what do you think? Bid, was this the right decision by Southgate mm. or would it have been a smarter move to just keep that momentum going, keep that winning mentality up? I mean, at the time, I thought we should go for the win and you know play our, play our stronger team. But looking at it now and looking at the way the draws worked out, Brazil looked like the best team in the tournament. Um, Japan would have been an easier game than Colombia. But yeah, if we're, if we're going to get to the quarterfinals, which you, you hope England would, um, yeah, we don't want to play Brazil. Um, and on the other side, we've got Switzerland and Sweden. Yeah. Now, you know, if, if we're going to get far in this tournament, they're, they're the games that we look, looks like we can win. Yeah. yeah. So I, th I mean, I, we'll talk about the performance specifically, and in, and in particular mm. about how a few players on the England team underperformed. But in terms of how it's actually panned out, performance aside, on Thursday night, um, I think it's perfect. Mm. Like, like we wanted to come second in the group. Realistically, I know some bit, some purists are like, no, you've got to try and win every game. But it, the, it's a fact, right? It's a fact. There is a better half of the draw to be in. Yeah. If you come second in the group, right? I'm not saying we didn't try and win the game, but we are where we are, right? We we didn't get spanked, so no. we haven't like we haven't demoralised ourselves. We didn't get done five nil or anything, yeah. right? We the, and even if we had, we hadn't played eight of our eleven players, so yeah. we would have that excuse yeah. psychologically to give ourselves. I just don't get it. I don't get there's some England fans on Twitter yeah. and, and on WhatsApp and all, all around people I know of the past twenty four hours going, oh here we go. England again can't play football and yeah. I'm like just shut up yeah. it's really but winding me up I'm I think like, I think the most interesting thing from this though is well you're taking a lot of this rides on that Columbia game yeah but mm. you look at this and the games we've played so far if you're the opposition teams if you're Colombia, if you're Sweden if you're Switzerland and you're trying to pick out how tactically an England game an England team are going to play against you you can't do it you've got the Tunisia game to watch, where we're playing a substandard opposition, and we should have put much more away than we did. You've got the Panama game, which is not a complete blowover, and then you've got a completely rotated squad to play mm. against Belgium. Mm. You cannot sit there and tactically assess how England will play against you. I think that's one of the biggest strengths of completely changing that team. There mm. are downsides to it. I think that, um, yes, you, you might have disrupted the flow of the team a little bit. You've made it clear who your starters are and who those who aren't starting they're just kind of squad rotation well, we players. knew that Danny, well, we knew that anyway yeah but yeah. It, I, I, it, maybe for squad cohesion that's maybe not the best thing but who knows but I think more importantly those, those things are debatable but I think more the most one of the most important things from this is that opposition teams will not know strategically how to play this England team if they come up against them in the knockout stages and that is a great move by Southgate mm. What do you think about the, what, how this reflects on the World Cup as a whole? Because it was a weird game, yeah. right? Um, and we've only got a few seconds left in this segment. But, but should FIFA look at this? And not just because of the England game, by the way, but also because of that weirdness in Japan-Poland where there was mm. like this sort of Poland were 1-0 up, Japan decided to take the risk that mm. they'd rather just stay at 1-0 down than go 2-0 down so that they would yeah. go through as long as Senegal didn't score. Is there anything that FIFA could or should do to stop what was ultimately 
it was a bit of a farce on Thursday yeah. in the World Cup. Right? Well, I mean, the Japan game was a complete farce. That last yeah. 10 minutes, um, they were just passing it to each other. But Poland didn't want to try and win the ball. So mm. they were just passing it around their, their back four. But they had taken this a gamble, which it seems crazy to me at the time. Because yeah. um, mm. Colombia could have just um, scored a second goal um, and they would have been out. Um, yeah. So, oh no, sorry, Senegal. Senegal, Senegal, Senegal could have got equal. Could have scored yeah. a goal, yeah. sorry. Yeah. And they would have been out. But if, um, if Poland had gone at the other end and scored, then they would have been out as well. Yeah. So they took this gamble. I don't think FIFA can do anything about it. Well, well just... no, FIFA have done something though. Mm-hmm. They're, it's going to be a 48-18 World well Cup next time around, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, well, that's, yeah, but no, that's, in, in 26. In tw- yeah, or is it 2026 when yeah, it gets yeah. to that size? Mm-hmm. That's what they've done, isn't it? That's, well, that's, that's 16, what, 16 groups of three they're doing? Mm-hmm. Which I think arguably could be worse because how, how is the dividers going to work on those three teams? Mm-hmm. And they, I think that, that could be make, a worse yeah, situation. Make, but, anyway, we're out of time, so let, let, yeah. let us know what you think. Um, not so much about FIFA, but about England. Should it should Southgate have played his strongest team, or at least when we were one 0 down, should he have thought about bringing on Kane or Sterling or or, yeah. or um, Rashford? Well, no, Rashford was on or um, yeah. Lingard. You know who? Henderson. Henderson. <laughs> Dyer was shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about this as well. We'll talk about what we think about the England team that did play. But in terms of whether it was strategically the right thing for Southgate to do, was it uh, a good decision mm. or a bad one? Let us know what you think in the comments. <laughs>